Good afternoon. It's one o'clock and time for the Wall Street Crossover Show, sponsored by Admiral Markets and co-presented by their market commentator, Darren Sidden. Good afternoon, Darren. Good afternoon, Zach. Uh, one or two things on people's minds in the market uh, at the moment. In fact, only really one, one thing on people's minds, and that's uh, the number which is going to come out in about half an hour. Yes, uh, US employment numbers, or non-farm payrolls as they're commonly known. Um, much has been uh, made of this number coming as it does um, uh, in, a, in a month when, or well, just after a month when the Fed didn't meet and two weeks ahead of uh, the next Fed meeting and it's seen as perhaps the, the pivotal point to, to finally decide whether the Fed will do anything in September or will will sit on its hands and wait till later in the year to raise rates. Is this genuinely uh, an important turning point? Is it the most it's obviously the, one of the one of the highlights of the year, and it will always be, you know, and it will it'll probably stay as that. But uh, in terms of, you know, we haven't had a rate rise from the Fed for ten years or something like that, and then, you know, post financial crisis, is it is it pivotal? It it will it will the actual data itself isn't. No, the sentiment that surrounds it might be the Fed obviously relies on 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 more than just one data point. It's got a much deeper, richer set of numbers that it looks at. Um, it, what it could do, I suppose, it's probably easier for, for the number to disappoint and to give the Fed an excuse not to do something. Right. Um, if, we, if you get a very strong number, then the market will be clamouring to some extent for them to move. Um, it's very difficult to call. Um, the, wor the worst that's, that's actually why I asked you, just yeah. to put you on the spot. But it, it's, it's sort of, it, it is something that, in a way, people who are trading here in the market, they do want, you know, they would like to hear a, you know, a decent summary of what, you know what yeah. the whole situation is but uh, we'll go into that in a minute uh, let's just go over to the data released over the European session okay um, well a couple of data points caught my eye this morning first of all uh, French consumer confidence came in at uh, for August this is came in at a read of 93 below forecast uh, of 94 and bang in line with the prior read of 93 so so uh, no obvious uh, improvement there in uh, in the sort of mindset of the French consumer um, and then perhaps more worrying than that number, uh, German factory orders for July, this is the month-on-month -month number that we look at here, came in at minus 1.4%, and that is massively lower uh, than the forecast contraction of minus 0.5%, and obviously way, way below. So uh, a total car crash, um, literally a car crash, given the, we're probably looking at uh, the, the automobile industry there. Yeah, quite literally, yeah. I mean, you know, it's not good news, and it probably sort of is the kind of thing that maybe Draghi was hinting at yesterday when he's the prior two plus two percent. Well, I was going to say, yeah. I mean, it's such a deviation from the from the prior number in June that you wonder what's going on there. Um, yeah, I mean, these are the kind of you know things that will as they would have been keeping Mr. Draghi and his colleagues in the. Plus, this is also a month. This is you know this is a couple of months back now. I mean, August would not have been a party either. Well, no, no. I mean, you know, one wonders what the what the number will look like. Uh, uh, you know, for always when we see that uh, in a few weeks' time. Um, and then the other big news, um, or the big talking point, more than anything, a G20 meeting being held in Ankara, Turkey, um, gathering of the finance ministers and central bankers from those countries. Um, there, there'll be many things on the agenda, but, but just to sort of set the scene, the IMF came out with a statement and it flagged uh, the China risk to global growth and it emphasised, as far as it was concerned, that there was no need. Uh, for rate rises in developed economies, and I think when it mentioned that, it was specifically thinking of the UK. And was the there US. only two? There were maybe only yeah. two really developed uh, economies yes. there, but only two two economies actually thinking of imminently raising Absolutely, rates. Absolutely, Zach. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's go on to the European movers. Okay. Well, a couple of, uh, of uh, items caught my eye. First of all, GKN. Uh, conveniently ticker GKN in London trading around 271.59 down 3.45% uh, and uh, down on a downgrade from uh, the broker Investec they've uh, downgraded the auto and parts and aerospace group to hold from previously from buy that doesn't sound so bad does it but they cut their price target to three pound from three pound seventy and again uh, they cited a slowdown in China and emerging market automotive growth and they cut their estimates for 2016 by 10 percent um, and uh, I, I probably doesn't come that much of a surprise but the market on a soggy day has given them uh, a bit of a hit and then looking at uh, the euro stocks 50 that narrow measure of, uh, of European equity performance but 50 of the leading European equities within that index trading around 3,211.5, down about 1.79%. Uh, and really, European equities are weaker on the global growth fears um, that, that Draghi hinted at yesterday and the IMF have reinforced. And of course, nervousness ahead of this key US data. Just to flag to, to viewers that uh, resistance at 3,300 uh, in this index has, has, has 
been pretty much rock solid since the 21st of August. So although we're off the bottom, um, we, we haven't been able to, uh, to, to get anywhere near back to, the, to our prior high. Okay, let's get on to the MA rumor, M &A rumors and movers. Okay, well, uh, news of a deal that uh, has been mooted for some time, but has actually come to fruition now. Uh, US company Avalon, uh, ticker AVOL, um, trading around $30, uh, up 4.6% pre-market. It's going to be acquired by Chinese rival Bohai Leasing, who are going to pay $31 cash per share for the company. And the pair had been talking uh, about some kind of combination since mid-July. Uh, the deal is thought to be worth around uh, 7.6 billion US dollars and Bohai had previously disclosed an intention to acquire, to acquire I should say, a 20% stake, but it's obviously expanded its plans to a full takeover. Um, Avalon is a specialist global aircraft leasing business, has a portfolio of about 227 planes with foot leased to 49 customers in 27 countries. And it IPO'd as recently as December uh, 2014 at $20. Um, so, you know, a reasonable premium, but nothing spectacular. Um, the deal will be subject to US merger clearances, but it's thought likely to proceed. But, uh, you know, aircraft leasing businesses have never done particularly well as quality companies in my experience. So it's perhaps not a surprise that it's been snapped up and taken off the market. Okay, well, that's... Uh go on to the US data, which we've mentioned briefly. Well, yep, I mean, the only game in town is the non-farm payrolls for July. Let's just have a look at some of the, uh, the numbers here. So the, the median forecast uh, is around 223,000, according to Bloomberg data. It's a wide range, though, of estimates between 173,000 and 257,000. As uh, Mr. Batsford, uh, the owner of this channel, or founder of this channel, would say, you could uh, drive a a double-decker bus through that spread. You could indeed. Uh, the prior read was 215,000, so we're looking for um, a slightly improved number from that, but it's anyone's guess where this number comes in and what the reaction will be. Um, beyond the, uh, the, uh, the headline non-farm payroll numbers, we need to look closely at the unemployment rate, which is probably more pertinent than the, than the, the NFP itself. Uh, the forecast is for a slight decline in unemployment to a rate of 5.2% versus the prior months of 5.3%. And then the other thing to look to look at here, average hourly earnings, because the Fed is you know, focused on or looking for tightness in the, in the labour market. One way you might see that would be through wage growth. Although, um, as ever, the forecast for average hourly earnings is, is for a modest gain of not, plus 0.2% against the prior read of plus 0.2%. So look for a deviation in any of these numbers, of course. Um, and if, uh, if they're better, then uh, a lower number for unemployment, but better numbers for for uh, average hourly earnings and non-farm payrolls would, would appease the hawks and vice versa for the dubs. Right, just, okay, well, let's go on to the pre-market uh, movers and levels there. Okay, so uh, first of all, um, something we probably use every day uh, we don't think too much about, Very Fond Systems Inc. They make uh, the machines that uh, allow you to make card, credit card and debit card purchases. Ticker PAY in the US, trading around $30, down 3.35% pre-market. And... Uh, they reported uh, last night after the close and they, they basically beat estimates on the earnings front but guided lower for the coming quarter and that that sort of disappointed the market. They haven't, you know, uh, hit them too hard but uh, um, it's just another sign perhaps that uh, uh, that was not quite so quite so well as far as the consumer and general retail spending. And staying with that theme, um, one of America's bigger uh, chain store clothing operators, Gap Inc, ticker GPS in the US, uh, $32.25 pre-market, down 2.3% themselves. Um, they released uh, August sales data yesterday and basically the numbers were weaker. Uh, chain store sales there fell by around 3% uh, year on year. Uh, sorry, by 3% for August, I should say, and year on year they were down 2%. Now, it, it wasn't quite as clear cut as that because certain divisions within the, the group as a whole did better than others, but nonetheless the, the combined or blended trend was lower um, and that's been well, dragging them down really across the, the late spring and summer. They haven't been able to to, uh, to show uh, concerted sales growth. So one to keep an eye on there, I think, as well. And then in terms of uh, the cash equity levels to watch today, um, haven't really changed the ranges uh, for FTSE in the deck. So we stay with 6080 and 6200 as the respective downside and upside levels, despite a wide range in FTSE to we haven't seen it break that over the last two days. And for the DAX, 10,080 on the downside, plays 10,220 to the upside, and, the, and the, the trend has been lower 
today. Uh, for the S&P, uh, 1940 plays 1965, a very um, lacklustre looking candle in the chart yesterday, and a similar story uh, for the Dow, 16,300 um, plays 16,416. In both those markets, we, we opened spiked higher but failed to hold on to the gains through the session and close much nearer the lows than the highs. Um, in terms of currencies, uh, the euro weakened yesterday uh, after Mr Draghi's press conference and we haven't rebounded particularly from that today. So 111.03 now at downside level against the dollar plays 111.48 to the upside. Um, Aussie dollar, US dollar testing again below uh, 70. 69.60 is the new level to watch for for a further downside move in the Aussie, uh, playing 70.10, which is a level it really needs to cement itself above its, if it's to avoid a further large fall, I'd suggest. Um, and then in dollar yen, uh, we've slipped off at the 120 handle, 118.55 now at downside level, plays 119.53 to the upside. Uh, and cable, edging ever closer to another uh, Handle change at 152.07 now. The downside plays 152.61 to the upside. As I left the office, we we're sort of smack in the middle of that range, but uh, you've got to think the bias is still eight, down. Eight days down in a row, yeah. apparently. Yeah. So uh, looking rather painful. Okay, in focus. Well, I just thought we'd look at something that we haven't really talked too much about of late, um, and that is the soft and agricultural commodities. Um, and the question is, have we bottomed yet? And of course, we've, you know, not just myself, but many other people have been talking about uh, falling metals and oil prices over the course of 2015. But soft and agricultural commodities have, uh, you know, an, an important impact too, particularly as benchmarks as regards or part of the makeup of consumer prices and inflation figures generally. Um, the question I wonder now is, are we perhaps starting to see a bottom form in some of these commodities? And the table here just takes a selection of, uh, of agricultural and soft commodities and I'll just highlight one or two things that seem to be improving. Um, year to date moves to the uh, far right hand side, but if we look at sugar there for instance, down a whopping 27.6% year to date. But over the last week we've seen, uh, we've, we've seen decent bounces. Um, and that may that may well continue. There's also been a, a marginal improvement over the last week in things like lean hogs, uh, and more recently, uh, yesterday in uh, New York coffee. So whilst it might be too early to say definitively that uh, things are bottoming out, there are some early signs that that might be the case, and we'll very much be keeping a watching brief, Pat, because you know an improvement in uh, these kind of commodity prices could ultimately filter through into inflation. OK, well, that's a slightly optimistic end to the programme on that. Um, hopefully we'll see, we'll, uh, we'll all be revealed at 1.30 in terms of the non-farm payrolls. Uh, we're not back on, uh, we're not here on Monday because of the Labor Day uh, holidays, I presume. Uh, it's going to be quiet, uh, quieter for the most markets on that day. But uh, Darren Sinden, thanks very much for that. And uh, we'll see you next week.